All right, good morning. I'm starting early today because um, Grant, my uh, student who usually comes and sits in online in class, I don't think will be here today. So I'm going to start early um, and um, we'll see how long this takes. So I'm starting around 7.30 today. And as it says, this will be the final lecture for the semester. The rest of the semester will be lab. I won't do any additional taping, all right? Today we will continue with day five, which will be the last day of our intro to react portion of the class. Again, this will be the last lecture of the semester. Uh, I have graded, I did grade this weekend, everything you have turned in through about, I don't know, eight o'clock a.m. yesterday should be graded. So if you disagree with something, let me know your grade is out there. So the only thing I really have left to grade to my knowledge will be people's uh, e-portfolios that, that are due by no later than midnight on Thursday. All right, so that's getting us started. We are going to create two different applications today, so I will show them to you. I've already got them done. I'm going to recreate them in front of you, but the first one we will do is a weather app. And let me open it up and run it for you so you can see what it'll look like or what it hopefully will look like when we get it all done. All right. Very, very simple interface. I just grabbed a large image of the weather from one of the free online sites, so there it is. So for instance, if I say St. Louis, you can see what comes up. The name of the city, the current temperature, the current conditions, the feels like temperature, the humidity, and the wind speed. This was taken from something I found online. I have made some modifications to it. All right, uh, I'm near Wentzville. So you can see it's very similar. All right, if I went and put in, for example, Nashville or Tennessee pretty close to where we are right now, all right? But if the system does not recognize a town, it does not do anything. For instance, if I put in Lake St. Louis, which evidently is not in its database or whatever, and hit enter, I get nothing. You know, so if I put in hello, I get nothing. But if I put in London, okay, you can see what happens. And if I put in Paris, for example, you can see what happens. All right, so that's the first one that we're going to do. Let me stop the run here. And as far as the other one goes, come on. The other one is a movie related app. So as you can see again, and this one will be created a lot differently than any of the other ones we've created so far. Again, you will get all of this code. It will be put in a GitHub repo, whoops. It will be put in a GitHub repo shortly. Hmm. Now for here, I'm going to come in here. Notice I had Avengers in here, so I'll put in Harry Potter. And I'll click the search button and it shows me all the Harry Potter movies and I can click on any one. Let's do uh, Deathly Hallows Part One. And I went out and grabbed some of the information from there. <clears throat> A description of the movie, uh, the kind of movie it is, the director, the cast and how much it made at the box office. OK, and up here we've got the title, the year it came out, and its rating. So if I come back and do part two of this, where was it? Deathly Hallow. I thought there was a part two, maybe not. Uh, but if I do the, I don't know what else is there. There it is, part two. All right, you can see exactly what happens. All right, and there will have to be some different differences, like I said, in that one as opposed to the other one. All right, let me... Uh, <clears throat> Make sure that everything here is off. That is the GitHub repo that I will be sending out to you shortly. 
All right, so let's just start at the beginning here. The easier one is the first one, is the weather one. Now, in order to use that, and I'm going to actually give you my API key, but I'm going to eventually turn my API key off. So you'll have to get your own. But if you go out to openweathermap.org, and let me put this up here in big letters. So if you come out here and you put this in, oops, try that again. All right, so if you come out here and you go out to just the openweathermap.org, Right there, you don't need the HTTPS stuff, but if you go out there and hit enter, all right, this is the open weather map. So we are going to be getting information from the internet that we're gonna be using in our program. What you will have to do is to get a login, all right? I've already got a login. So if I go to JP Scott, there, for example, are my API keys. All right, so as it says, I can sign into my account. All right, and if I submit, now I'm in as me, and there is the one that we will use in just a few minutes. Now, for the rest of you, you can get a, you can get a key for free. It doesn't cost anything. I've never gotten an email from them, etc. I use this, you know, once or twice a year. So you can go out to API here, which is Application Program Interface, and then start scrolling down and find this thing here that says current weather data. And if you do that and you click subscribe, I believe what it's going to do, maybe I grabbed the wrong one, let me double check. Let's see. Oh, I think I did grab the right one. Okay, there's a whole thing down here. You can see how to start, et cetera. But what should happen is when we get down here, we find the current weather data. You can go to API doc and it'll show you how you can go in here and make calls to this. What everything is, there's a few things that you'll have to understand. You can make calls in different ways. You can give a latitude and longitude, which is kind of hard. By default, it's going to use met the metric system. So you can change your units to imperial, which is you know, inches, miles, et cetera, all right? But the one that you'll want, the stuff that we're gonna get is gonna come out looking like this. It'll come out in JSON. Somewhere in here, I know when I went down long enough. This is pretty much the API call that you're gonna have to make. It's under built-in API request by name, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to immediately start keying some information in here, all right? The program itself, not real long, there's probably about 70 lines, and then we're gonna pretty it up, and that'll give me a chance to go back and show you the stuff that I mentioned that's in here, all this stuff and how it's used, really up here, this stuff. All right, so let's just get started. I'm going to come in and create a new folder. And I'm just going to call it uh, weather using React. Okay, that's fine, weather using React. Then I'll open up the folder, open up my git bash here, and do my npx create create react app dot because I've already got the folder created. Again, you will see in just a moment that there it's already made the package.json and you can see it start filling up with stuff shortly. All right, the node modules is done. That's the thing that takes the longest, of course. <clears throat> and I'll tell you what, while this is loading, 
let me go out because we're going to grab this data in a different way. So I'm going to go out to npmjs.com, which is the node package manager, and I'm going to search for a package called Axios. And it says promise based HTTP and for browser and Node.js. And if I click on it, it's another way that you can download information from the Internet. Is it used a lot? Well, last week it was downloaded approximately 45 million times, so I'd say yes. All right. If I keep going down someplace in here, I'm sure it even has. Yeah, it has its own GitHub page where you can find out a lot more about it. Not here so much, there it is, but if you keep going down, there's all the information on it. It's all hyperlinked up the wazoo, how to use it, examples of its usage, etc. So this is what we're going to use. We had looked at using XHR and we had looked at using fetch. It would be possible to do this using one of those, but we're using Axios basically because it's easier to use for the project that we're about to create. There's our happy hacking. <clears throat> I'm not going to run this right now. As always, it would just give us the logo. All right, so I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to open up. In fact, let's clean it up like we oft times do. So I'm going to keep. Uh, I put everything in index CSS, so I'm going to get rid of app CSS. Or did I? Let me double check. Yeah, I guess I did. I'm surprised. All right. So I'm going to get, in fact, I'll leave App CSS, but I'm going to get rid of setup tests, report web vitals, logo, and app test. I'll get rid of those four files right now. So they're all highlighted, hit delete, they're all gone. All right. Now let's clean this up the way we always do, and that I'm going to open up App.js first of all. And we'll open it up in code in just a moment, but I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. I'm going to make that a lowercase a. I'm going to get rid of everything that's in here. I'm going to make this a uh, arrow function, also called a function expression. All right, so that cleaned that up. I don't need my semicolons. So that's all done now, okay? And let's see what else we have. So I'm I'm cleaning this up. Um, just open that. App CSS. Again, we'll use this. I'm really not going to use again the logo, the media stuff, the header the link, the keyframe, so I can get rid of all that. In the index CSS, I'll just leave all that stuff in there. We may end up changing that, I don't know. And finally, I think that we haven't touched anything in the index.js file. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, that isn't true. We need to remove this web vitals from here and from here. All right. As always, you don't have to do this, but kind of what I like to do, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to go into my app.js. And in here, I'm just going to put hello. And I'm going to close everything that I've got up here right now. And I'm going to attempt to run this. I'm going to attempt to run this from inside of here. So if it says hello and nothing else, and it's probably centered, I should be fine to get started. There it is. There is my hello. Okay, all right, so everything is working right now. Everything looks good. So let's start writing the associated code. So this weather using React, I'm gonna open this up in code and just start typing. 
So everything again will be done in source. Let's start with our app.js, which we just cleaned up. And we'll start, like I said, start doing some typing in there. All right. First, let's get, a, get rid of the word hello. We don't need that. And we are going to be using React and use state in here. So I'm going to import React and use state from React. Okay, and now we've got this. So let's just start putting in our code and see what happens. All right, so I'm gonna have a, a couple use states in here. Const, one that's gonna hold all of my data. And that'll be all that JSON that you saw before, so. Now, that's gonna be a little different because that's an object, it's a JSON object. You may or may not remember that as far as what was in here, it all looks like this, that's an object. How do I know it's an object? Because everything is inside of a big set of curly braces. All right, there's other objects in here and that's fine. So when I initialize that, it'll be initialized like that, which means it's initialized to an empty object. And the other one will be our location, and I'm going to do a use state on state on that one, and it'll just be set to the empty string. All right, so that's the first thing. The next thing that I want to do in here, in fact, I don't want to put that into my div. I'm going to put that above my div. Okay, and again, don't worry. What do we have here that looks so funky? Okay, didn't like something that I did here. So let's look, import react, const app, looks fine. With that return, should we move down? There we go. All right. So, so this is what we have in here thus far. Get rid of some of this extraneous line breaks. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to be able to use this. Now, to use this, I already showed you this, but if I go out to openweathermap.org, all right, and I'll come back down to this in just a minute, but they talk about different ways that you can run this, all right? And one of the ways that you can run this is you can do an API call, and you can do an API call based on the city, all right? So I'm just going to grab this top one here. Copy it to the clipboard. And now. URL equal. And I am going to put this on its own line. OK. There it is. Now I'm going to have to make some changes here. All right. So the first thing is we've got what API openweathermap.org data 2.5 where we've got weather, this right here, for instance, if I came in here, I could put in St. Louis or I could put in Wentzville or Dallas or Miami or London. I could put in anything in there I wanted to, but then it would just be grabbing the information for one city. That isn't what I want. What I'm going to do is in my code, I'm going to make something in there that says location. And that's going to be whatever I key in. All right, the next thing I mentioned this to you already, it's going to try to give me the temperature in degrees Kelvin. I don't want Kelvin. I want degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so I'm going to come in here and say ampersand units equal imperial. And again, that means that what I want to use in here is not the metric system, but the standard system that finally in here they want your api key all right they don't want the words api key in here they want our actual key now at some place in here i have saved my key if i can find it
that's the one for the movies in just a bit. So let's see. I know I've got it in here somewhere. We'll find it. Hope we'll find it. Well, let's put it this way here. Well, let's go out to the website and find it. How's that? So I'm going to go out then again to JP Scott, my API keys. Try it again. JP Scott, there it is. That's the one I want. So I need to copy that. I think that'll copy it. Let's cancel that. Let me just grab all of it here. All right, so let me throw that in here. So again, the line looks like this. I'm creating a URL and that's what we're going to end up putting in there in just a bit. If that confuses you, please don't let it throw you. All right, but it's saying HTTPS colon slash slash API dot open weather map dot org. That's the website slash data slash the version we're using is 2.5 and then we've got weather and we're going to give it a location that's what's going to go into the text box in just a bit all right and the units are going to be equal to imperial again we're not using the metric system and ap app id the app id is going to be this thing that starts with 72 and i think it's not supposed to be in curly braces. Could be wrong here, but we're going to see it. I've got a copy of it that I'm working off of, and, and in that copy, it is not in curly braces. All right. The other thing I want to do is this is going to be an executable statement, so I want back ticks in here. All right. So there's my beginning back tick. There is my ending back tick. All right. Okay. Again, I'm writing code and I'm going to be referencing things. I can't run this code yet because of the fact that, again, I am writing code that is referring to things I have not yet created down here. All right, we'll get to that though in just a bit. All right. So, our search location. All right, what does that mean? That means that is going to be, this is going to run when we click inside of, inside of the text box that we're going to make for this. This is going to have an event. Now, this is different because there is no button. But if I hit the Enter key after putting something in, Again, if I hit the enter key after putting something into the text box, this is the code I want to run. I want it to call axios.get. I want it to go out to the URL that I just showed you. All right. And then it's going to give me some kind of a response. Should make sense. All right. And I want to set my data to the response.data. All right, that's going to give me back again everything. That's going to give me back everything that. Um, all the JSON that I showed you from before. So console.log. We'll take a look at it in just a bit and like that. Doesn't like something I'm doing here, so let's look at it. And I'm missing a paren. 
amazing how easy it is to screw one of these things up. All right, believe it or not, that is everything. That's all we need to put in. So the only other stuff to put in is actually our output that's in here. OK, so that's everything. So let me move this over a little bit. So again, everything that we're going to do, we're now going to put inside of here. All right. Now there's a few things we're putting in here. This is going to be that text box. So I'm going to put this stuff in here under multiple lines. The value is location. It's the same thing that you just saw in that URL. In fact, I don't need event. I'll just put E. Again, Now, usually I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm surprised because I see that underline through there. It's not an error, but normally what that means is when you see this, it's been deprecated. So there's a newer way of doing it. All right, but what, what, is, what is in here will still work. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. This is the way it was written originally and it works. All right. So. There's my first div right here. And again, this is going to handle. Yeah, we put something. And we basically every time we're, we're, we put something in there, it's going to be grabbing that information. Then when we hit enter, it's going to be calling search location, which is up here. All right. So let's continue on. This is where we're going to put the output. All right, so that was the input area, and this will be the output area. And we're going to have a top and a bottom. Again, I took this off of something I found online, but I did make modifications to it. All right, so there'll be a top section and there'll be a bottom section. So let's do the top first. Um, the first thing that's here says data dot name. That's going to be the name of the city. So where the hey did I get that? Well, let's go back down again and let's go back down to API. And get current weather data and API documentation. All right, and I want to go down to where I showed you that JSON. So when you look in here, someplace in here, there's a thing that says name. I don't know where it is, but some is, and that's the name of the city. It may not even be in this one because they've got a bunch of places in here where they show how this can be used. You see it's in here in 34 places, so there we go. This is the one I want to show you. So we want to grab this name right there. This whole thing, this whole object that's in here, we called it data. And where we want to go is under data. Notice there's nothing else in here, so we want data.name. 
Now, it won't be Zaka or whatever the heck that is. It's going to be whatever city we end up putting in there. All right. So again, what we have here is data dot name. That'll put in for us the name, the name of the um, city. All right. Then we'll put in the temperature. Now, this is a little bit different. If we put in a temperature for a city that does, let me say that again. If we put in a city that does not exist, there's no temperature to give us. If I put in, you know, some random characters, X, Y, Z, three, four, there is no city that I know of that's named X, Y, Z, three, four. So if that's the case, we don't want anything to show. But if we put in a valid city name, all right, then we want to go under the main part of data and using an H1, we're going to say here data dot main dot temp. And we're making sure that we don't want it to be 0.6 or 0.35. So we'll just do in here a dot two fixed without anything. All right. And we'll put in here, there is a way to get the degree symbol. I don't remember it. So let's see if we can find it. How to get the degree symbol on keyboard. Insert degree symbol. Place the cursor where you want it to go. Click insert symbol. There's another way of doing it too, where you can just grab it. There we go. Alt zero, alt plus zero one seven six. So let's try that. All right, so I'm going to hold right here down on the Alt key and press 0176. That, there we go, there's the degree symbol. All right, and I use the numeric keypad, not the keys, not the numbers that are at the top of the screen. All right, so I've got degrees and it's degrees what? It's degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if, if there isn't, if we put in a city that doesn't exist, we don't want anything to show. So I'm going to say here colon null, which just means again, if there isn't anything, there's nothing to show. So don't show it. All right. So we've now got the name in there, the city name, and we've got in there the temperature. All right. Well, that's a start. But if you remember, there was other stuff that we put in there as well. I put in there the current conditions by using an icon that's in there. So I'm going to come in here and do something else. Data dot weather. Again, there'll be a question mark colon in here. There's so much to type here that I'm going to put this over multiple lines. All right, so I'm going to put it into a paragraph. And this will be this image. And I, I did not have a clue on how to do this. So what I did was I went and Googled it. And then I give it a height. Uh, 
again, I'm not lying to you. I grabbed that from from the Internet. Let me do a word wrap on here so you can see it all. All right, HTTP, I'm trying to figure out what the problem is here, but we'll fix it. That whole thing should have a curly there. There we go. All right, so. Image source equal HTTP colon slash slash open weather map. Dot org slash IMG slash W slash dollar sign data dot weather zero, meaning it's in an array dot icon dot PNG. And then the height equals 70 pixels. All right. Now. Let's see. There was a question mark here, remember? So we need colon null, which just means if it's there, show it. And if it's not there, show nothing because there's nothing to show. Now, what doesn't it like here? It's coming back with identifier ex expected. So there's something it doesn't like. looking for an error in here and I don't see one. Fortunately, oh, I didn't end my image tag. There we go. OK. All right, we're getting there. Now that's going to do the top part. All right, that's going to do the top part. So in other words, that'll do everything that's on the top. I have no idea if we try to run this right now exactly what will happen. Let's just do a save all. And let's come back and try to run it before we put in the bottom part. OK, it's telling us I've got some errors. It says two errors. Line 37, parsing error. It doesn't like that degree symbol that we put in there, so it doesn't like this. I'll leave it out for right now, so we'll just have Fahrenheit. Oh, in fact, you know what the problem is? We didn't close right here. There we go. I can leave that degree symbol in there. So file, save all. It should not have any errors anymore. Good, it says that it compiled. All right, now it says Axios is not defined. All right, once we brought, for, we didn't bring Axios into the program. It's not in here. It is not in here. So there's two things we have to do to bring it in. Number one, we have to go into here And we have to install it. It's something from NPM, the Node Package Manager. So we have to say NPM I Axios. You can put the word install in. I is just a shortcut. Okay, now we've got Axios in there. All right, so we have to include it up here as well. So I'm going to import Axios. from Axios. This is just the name we're giving to the variable. We could call it anything we wanted to. All right, so I'm going to do another file, save all. I'm going to come back into here <clears throat> and here, and now I'm going to try an NPM start. See if it works. Okay, it may not, but I think it will. But we'll have the top part. We won't have the bottom part. Now, I don't have an image on here either. All right, so enter location, that's fine. So I'm gonna put in here, St. Louis. No, it doesn't like it. it. It's not giving me an error, but it's also not giving me my output in here. All right, so we'll have to work on that too. The point is I am still getting my top, my top area is in here. So let's do the bottom area now. All right, let's do that next. 
and then we'll come back and the other stuff that's not working, hopefully, hopefully at least we'll be able to fix that. All right, so we did the top portion in here. That's all been done. All right, now inside of this div, because I'm still in my main div, but I'm not in my top portion anymore. I want to say that again. I'm not in my top portion anymore. All right. So I'm down here. I'm still in this container, but I'm not in the top portion. The top portion ended right there. All right. So I want to put in the bottom portion. Should make sense, right? So that'll be down here. <clears throat> I think that belonged here. I'm looking at my code, and my code, I think, has some errors in it. So we're going to try to fix this on the fly here. So this will be our bottom section. And don't worry if you don't know what top and bottom are. That, that just class names that we're going to put in and use in our CSS in a few minutes. All right, we want a feels like temperature in there. This will be another question mark colon operator. All right. That'll give us the feels like temperature that's going to go on the bottom of the screen. Otherwise, again, we want null, meaning we want nothing. All right, so that'll be our feels like. We've got a couple more of these to put in here, and those will be the humidity and the wind. All right, I'm going to steal this and make some changes to it. And humidity is done by a percent, so I'll put a percent sign there and null. And then let's do it one more time. And this will be wind. All right, again, data.main. And this will be data. Dot wind dot speed dot to fixed and that is at miles per hour all right the last thing i want to do here we're just about finished is that question mark that we put in here or i'm sorry that uh bottom part where we put in this I actually want to close that way down near the bottom here. And believe it or not, I think we're done. Now, 
you already saw there definitely could be things that are missing here or things that are wrong here. All right, but I just want to see right now at least what it does look like. If anything. And then we'll add the CSS. So. Again, this will have no formatting on it other than that thing that says set location or enter location is centered. And I'm still not getting anything. That isn't a good sign. We'll have to work on that. It could be a lot of things. I could have the wrong URL in there. OK, it could be a lot of different things. So let's let's first let's put in our. Um, let's put in our CSS. OK, all right. Before we do that, all right, before we put in the CSS, OK, what I want to do. Is stop this. All right, underneath here. And you've seen this before. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a folder. That's called assets. All right, and under that assets folder, I'm going to add this weather icon that I have. So I'm going to put that in there. Let's see if it got there. Good. All right. So I now have an image or an assets folder with that image in it. So let's let's go in and put in our CSS and see if we can get this thing to work. All right, so I'm going to bring up here my index.css file. First of all, on the top here where I'm telling it I use the index one. So I'm going to put it index.css instead of app.css. Let's do a save all and let's bring up index.css. OK, I'll leave all of this stuff that's in here that's set up right now. The body, the font family, et cetera. That's all fine. All right. So let's just start putting in some code. All paragraphs. We want the font size. To be three rem. H1 tags. We want to be double that, so the font size will be six rem. All right, remember we call this thing app. With a little a. So we'll set the width to 100%. We will set the height to 100 VH, so it takes up the screen. The position will be relative. We'll put in a background color of black, but we'll make it semi translucent by using the RGBA, A for alpha, zero, 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 whoop, zero, zero point four. All right, and we'll put the color of our text to be white. All that stuff is stuff you've seen before. There's nothing new in there. OK, so that's our app stuff. Now we're going to have an app before in there, and this is where we're going to go in and we are going to add that picture. You have to put in a con some content there. Typically, it will just be nothing like we just put in. weather.jpg, okay. And I'm gonna put some stuff on the next line here. All right, I want no repeat. I want it to be centered and I want it to cover. Okay. To do that, I need a position absolute. A width of 100%, a width of 100%. 
height of 100%, a top of zero. Remember that right here in the upper left-hand corner is zero, zero. So the top will be zero, the left will be zero, and I'm gonna give it a Z index of minus one because I don't, I want the, I want the um, text box that we're creating to stand out in front of it. So it'll have, a, it'll have uh, you know, otherwise it'll be hidden. Okay, now for our search itself, Put some padding in there. Okay. And the input. Make it a little nice and roundish. Give it a border. All right, just a little bit more. For our placeholder. I didn't do this, but let's see if we can get that to align in the center as well. I didn't do that. I don't know if that'll work or not. Okay, our container that the whole thing is being held in. All right. Not too much more to go. Our top area. The description. And you'd probably want to play with this if you don't like the way I've spaced things. The bottom area.
literally about three more lines to type in. And that is just for that. We did have a class we called bold. And there we will set the font weight to 700. Now it's not going to work because it hasn't worked previously, but all of my, unless I screwed up something in here, which I don't think I did, um, I should have all of my uh, CSS should be working. So let's see that. And we'll go back and see if we can figure out why they, it isn't displaying. Cannot find index.css. I think it's because that's a lowercase and I made it uppercase, but I'm not sure. So let's see. It is. All right. And it does get funky with um, caseness. So that should fix that. Let's see if it fixed it in here. Yep. It's giving me one warning and I'm not going to worry about that. Oh, it's saying for the all, I don't, for the alt, I should have something in there. So, that image that I put, there we go. And I should say, I think, hopefully it'll take an alt right here, equal, I'm not going to put anything in there, just put it in like that. See if that removed the warning I had. No. Still has a warning in there, but that's OK. All right, so let's NPM start. Hopefully now I'll get output. But I don't think the program's going to work. I still have an error in there someplace. All right, it didn't bring in my picture. That isn't good. Uh, location again, Wentzville. I'd like that to be centered and it's not, and it's not giving me any output either. Huh. Let's see if we can figure that out. Again, you have a working copy, but now it's it's something that's. Let's see. I think it didn't like that alt, so let's look. Let's see if that does anything. All right, there's my inner location. All that's not working. But if I put in here Wentzville, I'm getting nothing. So let's see if we can fix that. Like, this, like I said, to center that too. I gotta remember what that is called. I thought that was just location. But I don't I don't know if I have anything. There we go. Value equal okay. App input. Let's see if we put a text align center in there if that works. I just want to see if I've now centered that. So when I start typing something in, it's centered. There we go.
windows. Import my index.css file. I like to set it up like that. All right, const app is fine. State location set location use state balance. Okay. I'm wondering if I screwed this up. Status five. Weather question mark Q equals location. Units equal to FID. It looks correct. Response to data console dot log. Whoa. Let's see. All right. This is just going to clear it out after I type something in there. That's not going to make it work, though. So. That all looks OK as far as I can tell. This is the same stuff that I did down below, but I'm just let's put it over multiple lines so it looks a little bit nicer here. There we go. Right. And that P no. Okay. Last name in the bottom, do it last name in the fields, data main. Main dot fields line dot to fixed. There's a mistake. The rest looks OK, so let's see if that fixed my error. Well, 
we'll try St. Louis. Still not getting anything. All right, well, what I'm going to do is, for lack of better words, I guess you could say I'm going to cheat, but I'm going to replace my code with my code. So let me grab the one that worked. Same code. Except somehow in the one that we've just done, I've somehow co copied something in incorrectly. All right, this is the same exact stuff that we just had. But I want to see if that fixes it or if the problem is in my CSS, which I wouldn't think it would be. This is way too big because it's at now there's 150, 125. There's 100%. All right, looks like I need to make it a little bit smaller even. So you'll notice I now have it. There's Wentzville, it's 51, it's clear. If I put in another, notice this is clearing out too. So if I put in Paris, which I spell wrong, there's Paris. If I put in London, there's London. If I try Miami, if I try uh, Nashville, okay. it's not working. This, I should have spaced out a little bit more, but it's okay the way it is. All right. So I now have given you something where we went out to the internet and we literally grabbed information out there. Now, the only thing that may still be confusing you, and it would be easy to say that it was, and that is when we went out here, all right, you'll notice that, for instance, when we did the temperature and when we did the feels like and the humidity, they were all inside of data.main. However, when we did the wind speed it was inside of wind that's what was giving me the error i had it in data or in main but there's the wind speed and here was the name of the city that we used etc so it takes a little bit of dinking around to play with this to get it to work is what i'm telling you all right so that's the first one and again you will get working versions of each one of these all right Okay, so let's see, what do we got? Let's, uh, I'm gonna do a file, save all. In fact, I don't even need this one anymore. Okay, because you've already got this, weather using React. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. In fact, before I do that, let's shut, ev oops, shut everything down that was open in here. Okay, so that's shut down. This should allow me to remove this now. And we're going to create the other one. So I'm going to just start the project up and then we'll take a break. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call this movies using React. What the heck happened there? But something did. Movies using react all right again i will open this up bring in my px create react app dot and just so you see this this is another api but this is going out to open uh what is it open OM, 
I'm going to put in here that this open movie API. I'll let Google find it for me. There it is. It's OMDB API. All right. This is the one that you'll need for this one. Close this. I can. There it is. No, nope, that's the open weather map. The one you'll need, though, is right here. OMDB, Open Movie Database API. Dot com. That will allow us to go in there and do this. There is an API key. Now, when you do this, choose free, put in your email, and it will tell you that if you don't get it, but you know, you'll get a message that says if you don't get it within a day, you'll have to email this guy, Brian Fritz. I had to do that. All right. I had to actually go out and email him to get the key, and he gave it to me, boom, just like that. All right. So let me refresh my water. And uh, I will come back in about five minutes and we will finish this one up. There's a couple things we have to do on this movie one that we did not have to do earlier. All right. We're going to write it in a little bit different way. I'll see you in just a minute or two. All right, I guess that was a minute or two. So we're going to do this open API. All right, of the. Uh, this online movie database, OK? So let's get started. We've got our project. OK, and for now, I'm going to close that down. And we're going to do a couple of things, like I said, differently in here. Now, just so you know, one reason I had to do things in here a little bit differently, one reason that I had to do this was it, it appears as though some of the stuff that I was working with has changed, and I either had to find new code or make changes into package.json, and I did that because it was just a fairly simple changes. So if you open up your package.json, these two lines here, have to be changed instead of react scripts start and react scripts build these have to change as follows react scripts minus minus open ssl minus legacy minus provider start all right and this will have to be the same thing but like that. So start and build. And again, it has to do with something that was changed since the time I originally created this about a year ago. All right, so that's done. So that's the package.json. That's one of the things that had to have been done. Now, one thing that I mentioned to you quite a while ago, I did mention this to you quite a while ago, and that is that React is actually set up for you to create components. All right. Do you care? Should you care? Do you have to care, etc.? I don't know. But what we're going to do is in our source folder, we're going to create another folder in here. First, let's get rid of this. We don't need to set up the report vitals, the logo, the app test. So we'll get rid of all those. All right. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a new folder. And that folder is going to be called components. And that's where we're going to put all of our, I shouldn't say all of it, but a lot of the work that we're going to end up doing. All right. And again, if I have problems like I just did, I'll copy all the code over, but you will have the working finished product. All right. So let me get going here. And it doesn't matter. We've got three files we're going to put into this components folder. So let me take this and open it up using code. We've now got a components folder under source components. There it is. 
All right, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in a new file. And the first one that I'm going to create, I need movie details, movie list, and I need movie error. All right, and error is the easiest one. It's the shortest one. So I'm going to do that one first. So this will be movieerror.js. It's not long. It's about 10 or 15 lines. So this will be to handle error conditions. Now, I'm going to put some code in here, and some of it, I'm not going to give much of an explanation, just because I don't want to overwhelm people with stuff. Plus, I don't want to take away from the way that Mr. G, Mr. Goodness, it'll put it to you in, in the summer, okay? But I, I mean, I'll explain it, but just not in a lot of depth and breadth of coverage. Remember, this will be for our error condition. So if I were to put in for a movie XYZ123, there probably isn't a movie called that. So we'll put in an H1 that says movie not found. And then underneath that, we'll have a smaller thing that will say, please try again with a valid movie title all right and we're going to just send them back to the home page Okay, and at the bottom, we of course want to say export default movie error, error. So if we put in a movie that does not exist, we should get a message that comes up with an H1 tag that says movie not found, and then an H2 tag underneath it that says, please try again with a valid movie title. Then underneath that, a button that says try again and if you click it it should send you back to the home page right so that's our error condition okay so that's the first one and then we need a movie list and a movie details all right this is a bit of typing so let's do the movie list next that's the hardest one so we've got our movie error inside of our components, but now we want to put in a new file that's called movie movie list.js. And while we're here, let's just put in the other one, even though we won't put the code in now. And this will be movie details.js. So we now have the three files that we'll need to put into our component area. Heck, we got details open. Let's do that one next. That one has, it looks like, oh, about 80 lines to put in. So let's just start typing.
this will be returning an object. It'll have all of that movie information inside of an object. So we're initializing it to an empty object. All right, now we're going to call use effect here. And what we want it to do is we want it to basically, anytime we change what we put in there for a movie, we want it to change. So if I put in Harry Potter, we want it to find all the Harry Potter movies. If I put in there the Avengers, I want it to find all of the Avenger movies, etc. Now this right there is grabbing the ID. Every movie that we put in there has got an ID. The reason that what I'm telling you is there's a difference between putting in Harry Potter and putting in the name of a Harry Potter movie. The name of that movie has got an ID associated with it. Now you'll see here I've got props, which we have not even talked about. So why am I going to talk about it now? Because when you pass things into a routine, you're, you pass them in by what are called props. All right. We'll want to do this every time. So I think that's everything. We need a comma there. There we go. All right, so that's our use effect. Now we need to extract, we need to write this routine. Extract movie details by ID. Okay, so let's write that now. And the key here is much smaller. I think that's my key. Let me wrap this. All right. So this is the URL right here. And this is going to be whatever we pass in for an ID. All right. And this is my API key. Now let's look. over to here because I thought that was my my key. This may be the key of the person. In fact, let me try try it with my key and see if it works. I can always go back and change it again later. Okay, all right. So that'll be our URL. Now this time we are going to use a fetch. That's everything for our um, 
code. Now, the only thing we have to put in then is our return. And of course, when we get down to the bottom here, export, all right, we will have to say export default movie details. Okay, now let's put in our return stuff right here. It's not real big, 30 lines, maybe 20 or 30 lines. Then we'll go back and write the other one. These will be the movie details, title, all right, so that'll be the title of the movie. If you remember, we had that on the top, followed by the year the movie came out. And then after that, we just put a bar in there and then we had the rating. Okay, so that's what's going to appear at the top. So if I've got, you know, I don't know, The Egg and I, which is a movie, it will say The Egg and I. Let's say it came out in 1957 and it's rated PG. So that's everything that it'll have in there. All right, so that's the header stuff. Then we need our main content. These are arbitrary names that I'm using. I mean, header content and main content just made sense. This will be the image. And that's what you saw that looked kind of cool on there. Called the poster. And this time we will put an alt in there. All right. So that's our image. Then under our image, we're going to put in our details. This is inside of our main content. There's the genre. We could put in anything in here we wanted. They literally give you back about 20 or 30 pieces of information. I decided to put in the genre, the plot, An HR tag I added after that just so it looked a little nicer. You didn't have to do that. It's nice. All right. Then the director. <clears throat> followed by another horizontal rule, followed by the cast, followed 
followed by another horizontal rule. And none of those horizontal rules are necessary. And followed by box office. In other words, how much money did it make? And in fact, on all these, like the, here, we can put in this, like genre, lot, otherwise it might get a little confusing, uh, director, and notice I spelled that wrong. Cast. And then finally, box office. And that is actually it for that file. All right. So let's do a save all on here. And let's write the last one, which is the movie list. And unfortunately, it's the longest one, I believe. All right. And I wrote it and then rewrote it because I didn't like the way it was at first. So, all right. We're almost we're almost done with the actual code. Then we'll go back and we will add the. Um, I put in a little bit. I'll make it maybe quite a bit of CSS. Again, that's going to be what we type into the box, what we're looking for. This will be an empty array. And finally, we're going to have a Boolean in here, which may be the first time we've used a Boolean with our set state. No movie found. And we'll have that be equal to false. When we start. OK, move these over. All right. Our use effect. What we want to do here is get the movie name from local storage. Hopefully you remember that from an earlier chapter. Dot get item. All right, if it finds it, <clears throat> it doesn't have anything to do with that. 
But if it finds it, of course, it should handle it. OK. Now you can see with all this typing, and you saw this on the last program, that it's so easy to make a mistake. All right, especially the way that I seem to type anyway. All right, so I'm going to put all this in, and there's over 100 lines or around 100 lines that I'll have to put in, I think over. All right, but if I make a mistake, I'll just copy the other ones in here instead. Okay. All right. So this is handling change. That's so that's handling whatever we put in to that uh, to the start to the text box. This will be whenever we click the button that goes along with this. Yeah, we already grabbed that movie URL once. Let's grab it again so we can use the same thing in here. But now rather than movie details, I'm just going to call it movie URL. And again, let me word, let me wrap this. Okay. So remember, there is a when you work with local storage, you can get it out of local storage with get item. You can put it into local storage as we will right now with a set item. Now, what we did in the class that I taught is we went over Axios and Fetch, all right? And we did this one originally using an Axios, but then I went back and had them redo it using a Fetch. So that's what I'm going to put in here. You know what? I'm just... There's just too much typing here, so let me grab it and then we can go through it, okay? Let me just grab the finished product and we'll go through that typing that's in there. All right. So we'll go over this in just a moment. Um, let's see. All right, let me just for right now, let me run it, see if I get anything or if I've made mistakes typing. Okay, so start. You've seen me type enough this semester that, and it's so easy to make a mistake in here anyway. All right, and I did, so let's see what we have. Props is not defined there, let's see. Cannot resolve React Router DOM. That's in a couple. All 
All right, I lost my internet connection for a moment here. So let's see. Let's go back to this one. Let's do this. Sorry, I'm I'm cheesing out here, to be honest with you, but I'm going to go back to the working one. OK. All right, so let me go back to the working one here. We'll take a look at it in just a moment. But this is the movie app. Now I may have, I may, in fact, let's kill what's on the port first. Now I can come in here, this should work, and I can put in, for example, there were movies, 70s, 80s, I don't know, called, that were under Dirty Harry with Clayton Eastwood. So I put in Dirty Harry and I'm gonna click search, and there they are. All right, there's a couple of them here. There's Harry the Dirty Dog, all right. And you can see, there's the cast, documentary, et cetera, no, no box office information. You know, if we do, uh, how about Lord of the Rings? You know, there were quite a few of those. There we go. All right. Looks like there were about 10 of those. So let's grab this one here. All right. Was a drama. All right. Notice for the director, I did put that in over here. It would have been nicer probably if I would have said here genre and plot, but I didn't. There's the cast and there's the box office. All right. But what I want you to understand is this. That is right here. I'm going to grab this. This is the URL for this. All right. This is the ID for that movie. Okay, so if I wanted to just search for an individual movie as opposed to what I just did, I could provide the ID. So in other words, I believe at least, let's try this and see if it works. So let me copy this. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just gonna to go to the internet. All right, I'm gonna jump out here to the internet. And I'm going to type in HTTP colon slash slash www dot OMDB API dot com slash. Um, question mark. S. Equal. Dollar sign then in parens that. All right, AMP API key equal EAD99E79. All right, well, it came back and it said that that movie was not found, so something was screwed up in here. Let's see if we can figure out what it was. All right, I'm going to grab this. Put that back in there. Okay, first of all, it's an HTTPS, it's changed. WWW.OMDBAPI.com question mark S equals dollar sign. And I need the movie, so that should be this. Okay, and the API key equal. Let's see if it'll take it with two more changes. Change that, and I'm going to put my, what I thought was my key in there. All right. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I thought that was my key there.
still say movie not found. So it doesn't like something about what I'm doing here. But let's go back. I'll take about 15 minutes and let's go over everything that's in here. Everything. All right. So let's see. So I'm going to go back into here. And under source, I'm going to go through the components that are in here. I'm not going to go through the CSS. I think you can figure that out yourselves. Now you'll notice here we already went through this one, and that is the movie errors. That was whoops, the errors. That was the short one here. All right. But if I do come in here and I run it again, you've already seen the run. Okay. So let's go back and let's put um XYZ one, two, three, four, five, six, ABC. Probably is nothing with that name. Movie not found. Please try again with a valid title. Try again. So that stuff that you see right here is all of the stuff that I got from right here. Movie not found. Please try again with a valid title. Try again, and there's your button. That should send us back to the, our home page then when we click that, and it does. All right, so that's that one. Let's look at the other two that are in here. So that's the movie error. This is the movie list. All right, now this was written with the old fashioned functions. I've been using since then, I've been using almost exclusively arrow functions. All right. Now there's a few things you're gonna have to realize in here because there are things we have not talked about yet. What do I mean? All right. Well, this is a nav link, which is going to allow us to move up and down on the page. All right. This will redirect us. So if we want to literally, if we are at a certain page and we want to quickly go to another page, it can redirect us if we have a broken link or whatever. All right. Then we've got three pieces in there of state. And you'll notice the search term is what we're going to end up typing into that text box that's in there. We are initializing it so that it is set to the empty string. Movies are going to be all of the information that we get back. All right, all of the information that we get back from uh, OM DB API about the movie. The no movie found is what we're going to get back. That's the Boolean. Because if there isn't anything found, we wanted to print out that error message. All right. Then what we're doing is we're taking and we are grabbing the search term if there is one. So if we have saved it, we are putting it into local storage. All right. And if, if there is a term in there, the handle click basically is going to be this routine right here. So there's the URL. All right, you put it into local storage and then we're fetching it. This is actually grabbing it. You say this again, this is actually grabbing it from out on um, out on the Internet. We're doing a fetch. It's giving us back JSON. We're saying that if there was an error, meaning it, you know, we don't, as it says, we don't want to render anything. So we're setting that no movie found to be true. And we're removing it because we put garbage in there. That was like that X, Y, Z, one, two, three, A, B, C that I put in. Otherwise, we found it. So we're providing the information. All right. This, as it says, will clear the screen for us. This, if you notice in here, we've got a return movies equal movies dot map. Well, if you remember, as an example, with Harry Potter, what we had in there with Harry Potter was we had a multiple number of movies that had Harry Potter in there. So the map allows us to go through and like when we just did Lord of the Rings and there were 10 movies to show us all of them. All right, we had a bad black or a dark background and it showed us the movie poster. All right. And later when we clicked on that poster, then it was going to show us the individual information, the title, etc. 
All right. So this is what we're returning from here. I don't expect all of it to make sense. Probably a lot of it doesn't make sense. And that's actually is OK. So when we get the details, and I already kind of went through this one with you. All right, that when you get the details. And I didn't put that in before, that's why I was getting that error in mind. I need to put props in there when you want to go and be able to pass information into a routine, whether it is a regular function like this, or if it's a function expression, also known as an arrow function, like I've been writing, when you pass something in, you pass it in as the word props, which stands for properties, which are arguments that you can pass into a routine. All right. We've got one use state in here to give us their movie details. Since it returns an object, we're initializing it as shown there to an empty object. All right. And we're calling use effect. OK. And then we're getting all of our information and we're printing it out. Again, as I mentioned to you, I probably could have done, should have done, is I should have come in here and said title. And then here I could have said year. And then here I could have said, well, I don't need a poster thing, let's see. This could have said genre. Probably would have looked a little nicer than what I have. All right, so if I come back to here again, and I stop this and I run it again. I think at least and now it'll look a little bit nicer. I'm not going to change the one I gave you. All right, it works. I don't want to monkey with it. So again, when I say here now, Harry Potter. And I click on one of these. Oops, now it's got year. Oh, I didn't put the rating in there, so it could have. And we didn't put in. Um, Sean, oh, that is genre. That should have been genre. That should have been plot. So let's fix that and then I'll be finished with this. And there's one more thing I want to talk about. All right. So the genre is not the plot. That is. So that's plot. That is genre. All right, and for here, we've got the year now. We can put in the rating. All right, genre plot director. I think that's all in there now. Let's run it one last time. And we'll switch back to the Avengers. There it is, even if I grab one of these. All right, so now I've got title, year, rating, genre, plot. I think that looks a little nicer. You don't agree? Leave it the way it is. All right, now one more thing I want to mention, and that'll be it for the year. All right, and that is this. Mr. Gudmiston sent me an email. I am going to forward it on literally right now to all of you. And what it is, is it's a survey for the course. Please fill it out. I'm going to open this survey up, so I'm going to click preview. There's actually several surveys in there. Don't do the one that says seated. Don't do the one that says internship. Do do the one that says online course evaluation survey. You can either go and work with a QR code or you can click on link. All right, and in here, now I wasn't in here the other day. I'm hoping I am now. The course code should be AWD. The instructor, I'm hoping against hope I'm in here. There we go, is Jeff Scott. All right, so this is what you're supposed to answer. This is it. The syllabus was consistent and current. The online learning activities helped me meet the course objectives. It was clear to me that the instructor was knowledgeable. The instructor was helpful if I had questions. 
the instructor adequately facilitated online discussion. Now, you might not even think that one's ap not applicable. You know, put down what you think. The instructor adequately facilitated using Teams. The instructor provided interaction for students. Assignments were graded in a timely manner. Technical support was available and the textbook was OK. This is a chance if you want to write anything about anything that's up there that you strongly agreed or disagreed with, that's OK. All right, and here it says a method or teaching strategy my instructor used to help me learn was you can say something good, something bad, something whatever in there and any other comments you have. Fill all that out and click submit. I guarantee you, I promise you, I never see any of this. I don't see any of it. All right, all I get is a summary at the end and if there's any relevant comments. And almost always, there's someone who doesn't like the instructor and someone who does. If, if anybody says anything derogatory in there, they usually throw that stuff out. I don't ever see that, all right? But just all I've ever asked is please be honest, okay? So again, you will get this email from me, from Evan, it goes right to somebody at, at Rankin, not to me. All right, so I will forward that to each and every one of you in just a couple minutes. It's been an enjoyable semester for me. I hope it's been an enjoyable semester for you as well. For those of you who will have me for the AWD 1100 C-sharp class, which starts Oh, it's about two weeks from today around somewhere like that. All right. Um, I hope to have the syllabus out to you later this week. All right. For those of you who are going on and we'll have Mr. G for the AWD 1111 class, you couldn't be in better hands. He gets this stuff. He's super good instructor, super nice person, super available person. All right. I may or may not see you then in fall, depending on the classes you're taking and what my schedule might happen to be. All right. Again, it's been a pleasure having you here. You will get this link for surveys in just a couple minutes. Once you get that link for surveys, please, please take the time to fill it out. The only way I get better as an instructor is for me to get constructive criticism. The only way the class improves is for constructive criticism. I like to look at every bit of criticism that I get as constructive. All right, there's certain things I've mentioned this to you before. You might laugh. It's not meant to be funny, but years ago I was doing one and a student put down. I just hate his voice. Not much I can do about that. All right, but if you know if I didn't do a good enough job of whatever it happens to be. Maybe I should have been more accessible to you in teams than you think I was and put that down. All right. So again, other than that. I'll see some of you in summer. And for the rest of you, good luck in summer and good luck the rest of the way. All right. Take it easy.